interest rates, then the interest payments on the government debt will go up substantially. And that will create a situation where potentially 50% of tax revenues will be paid to pay the interest on the government debt. So there won't be any money really for other services from the government. And so that will force basically the Federal Reserve to print money and print more money. And obviously in the long run, this will be highly inflationary. I'd also like to explain something which many people don't understand because they believe in this deflation scenario. In a system, you can have excess liquidity and it does not necessarily have to go into consumer prices. In other words, today we have in the world huge excess capacities. So who wants to build another factory? We have people, their households are over leveraged, so they want to save, spend less. So that doesn't lead necessarily to an increase in consumer prices. But if you pump money, as the government does here, then this excess liquidity goes into something. And that something can be commodities, it can be equities, it can be real estate, and so forth and so on. But it doesn't go into sectors where there's a huge oversupply, and say in America there's a huge oversupply of homes, so home prices kept on going down. But it went, as I said recently, into the commodity markets, into precious metals, and into equities and boosted these assets on the upside. So you can have deflation in one sector of the economy and inflation in another sector of the economy. Inflation is defined as an increase in the quantity of money and of credit. And if consumer prices go up or real estate prices go up or wages go up, it's a symptom of inflation. It's not just inflation. And that's why when people talk to me and say, oh, there will be deflation and the S&P will drop to 400 and gold will go to 200, I tell them that is most unlikely to happen because the Federal Reserve can print money. And I want to assure you that the ECB is not much better. They all print money. The central bankers of this world today are money printers, nothing else. And so they will keep on printing money and therefore there will be inflation in some sectors of the economy. And the rest assured, the weaker the economy is, in other words, the weaker consumption is, the weaker capital spending is, the more they'll print. But the money will not flow into new factories. It will flow into some kind of asset markets. Could be gold, could be silver, could be platinum, could be equities. And it can change very quickly. It can go three months into equities, three months into commodities, and three months possibly into home prices. That is the tricky part of this money printing exercise. Now, the Federal Reserve, by keeping interest rates at zero, they have as an objective basically to move cash from deposits and banks into essentially consumption and into asset markets to make asset markets go up and create essentially a wealth impact so that people start to spend again. And let me explain you one point. Recently, a Harvard professor, of course, wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal uh, with the following view. He said the way to move the cash, here this is the cash position in the US as a percent of the stock market, still at a very high level. It's come down recently, but it's at a very high level. He said the way to move this cash into spending, and again, the US economic policy targets always spending by people. Believe me, spending or consuming, is consuming means you have here a plate to eat. You consume it, then where is the plate? It's gone. It's been eaten. It doesn't create wealth. Wealth comes from capital spending, from investments. So that is already the first mistake of US policymakers to almost always stimulate consumption. But basically, these economists of Harvard, uh, Gregory Mankiff, he argues as follows. He says, well, if people keep their money in the bank and don't spend it and so forth, what we could do is have 
strongly negative real interest rates. In other words, you deposit today $100,000 in the bank, and after one year, you only get $94,000 back. So the government takes $6,000. So then, of course, people will no longer keep the money in the bank. They will go and spend it, or they'll go and invest it in something, or they'll take it from the bank and take it home in cash, banknotes, and put it under the mattress. Then Mr. Mankey says, well, if they do that, there's another way to counterbalance this. What we can do is have every year a lottery and then declare 6% of banknotes as worthless. So in other words, if you have $100,000 in banknotes at home, after one year's time, maybe 6% of these banknotes will be declared worthless. So that will force you to spend. Then Mr. Mankiff says, well, that is also problematic because people could buy gold and silver and other things and may not necessarily do spending. So the best way to go about it is to create inflation of 6% per annum. And I'm mentioning this because this is the frame of mind of American policymakers and of the Federal Reserve to create inflation. And that's why I don't believe that they will ever pursue tight monetary policies. They'll keep interest rates near zero for a very long time. And when they increase them, like after 2004, they'll increase them below the rate of inflation, below the rate of GDP growth, and eventually it will be very inflationary, very. Not right now, because as I said, we have excess capacities and essentially we have glutted markets uh, for consumer goods and so forth, and we have the consumer saving more, but eventually it will be inflationary. Now, the Federal Reserve is partially successful at pushing this cash position down because, and this is also important to understand, if interest rates are at zero, there's one function that money loses and this is the function to be a store of value. With zero interest rates, money is no longer a store of value. Then people go and buy all kinds of things. They buy bonds, they buy stocks and there is no opportunity cost in owning gold and silver. So at zero percent interest, you essentially, for me, what do you prefer to own? A US dollar where you have a money printer printing money or you prefer to own gold and silver? In my opinion, gold and silver cannot be increased at the same rate than paper money. Paper money we can print, we can double the quantity as the US has done over the last 12 months very easily. You cannot double the quantity of gold and silver. So I would say everybody should consider that, that at zero interest rates, essentially in the long run, cash is of course becoming worthless. And so the money is being pushed and that the Federal Reserve has been partially successful at pushing money into the stock market, into the bond market, but it of course also pushed money into commodities and so the price of oil more than doubled, which is of course negative for consumption. But this is the policy of the US. Keep interest rates for a long time at levels that make savings or keeping money in the bank unattractive and trying to push money into spending and into obviously investments in all kinds of assets. Now I have to explain one more point which is very important in the context of the world and this is as the US pursued this monetary policy to boost consumption through asset markets and through the credit bubble Obviously, we had overconsumption in the United States in the period 1999 to 2007. And this overconsumption can be measured by consumption as a percent of the economy, which went from 70% to 78%. Or it can be measured, and that is a symptom of overconsumption in a country as a result of a growing trade and current account deficit. And you can see that the trade deficit here in the US increased very strongly between 1999 and 2007 and the current account deficit as a result of that increased from 150 billion dollars annually to 800 billion dollars annually. 
In other words, before there were 150 billion dollars American dollars that were flowing into the world and suddenly in the last few years there were 800 billion dollars flowing into the world. 